Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. On this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you just some kind of fun ideas for things that you can do that are um, on leaves. Uh, it's fall, almost. I mean, it's September, so yeah, I guess it is fall. And um, everything's super affordable that we're gonna be using. Most of it came from the Dollar Tree and then the um, the craft supplies are from magnoliadiy.com and I'll pin a link to that in just a minute in case you want to look. But, uh, in fact, let me do that right now. I have some fun things to show you. Okay. I'm getting better at this. Voila! Okay. All right. So the first idea that I want to show you today is the idea of using one of these tin cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack. Let me dump everything off here. Um, and they are $1, so they're 50 cents a piece, okay? And um, what you can do is you can, I wish I had a giant punch so I could just punch out leaves, but um, this is not hard. So basically what I did is I got on um, Google and I um, searched for, uh, what did I call these, for images of leaves that I could print. And these were the two that I found. And then these were both pretty big, so I just used my photocopier and I resized them to make them a little bit smaller. And what I ended up was something that looks like this. Okay, so then to make one of these leaves look like this. Remember, I showed it to you guys last week. It was part of my toilet paper pumpkin display. Don't you think that just adds a ton? Ton, ton, ton. And they cost hardly anything. They don't take very long to do. Okay, so all I did was I just took my little print out and I laid it on top of my um, piece of tin. Let me bring my camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm having tripod issues today, so... <laughs> uh, Anyways, so I laid it down on top of my tin, and then I just traced over it, pressing down hard with just a regular pin. And what you're gonna get is something that looks like this. Can you see that outline? And then I'm gonna cut around it so it'll be easier to cut out. And when you're working with this pin from Dollar Tree, do, do be careful because the edges are pretty sharp. And if you're not careful, you could accidentally slice your hand. Okay, so. It's very noisy. Okay, so this, we'll use all the rest of this for other pro projects involving the Dollar Tree tin. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then you don't have to cut exactly where it is, but I just want to show you how easy, whoops, I already almost cut my leaf off. Um, you want it to look kind of jagged and rugged. And in case you're worrying that this might wreck your scissors, it actually is gonna sharpen your scissors. So it's gonna be good for them. I'm not gonna cut this whole thing out, but I wanna show you how I, how I folded and crumpled and bent it so it looks a little bit more realistic. These scissors are doing something weird here. So I've got like five other craft projects in the works in here in my craft room. And um, I don't know, I just couldn't get excited about them for today. So then I was looking around and thinking about what I was excited about. 
and it was all these leaves. Um, so that's how I decided what I was gonna show you. Maybe I will just take a second to cut this out. So talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. Hey, and as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. If you're new to DIY Dreaming, you've only seen this or maybe a couple other episodes, let me know that too. I'd love to see that. And um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. These scissors are having a problem. So I'm going to just finish this real quick and then I'll show you how you can kind of bend and crumple this so it looks a little bit more realistic. And I did mess up my stem and I don't want it that long anyways, so. Okay. Hermitage, Tennessee, Texas, Kansas, North Carolina. New Jersey, where else where, where did I see? Um, Alabama, Las Vegas, California, Arizona, lots of Texas. Thank you guys for watching. I wonder if it's my, if this keeps wanting to turn because of how I have my lights positioned. I don't know, it's driving me crazy. Okay, so this is what I have, and um, I'm just going to bend the points back out again because they, they do get pushed in a little bit. Okay, and on the thing that I traced, you notice that I traced that big vein down the center and then these on the sides, okay? And you can keep using the same sheet over and over. I've used it twice already. And then essentially, so here's, you can see those veins. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of fold along those veins. Can you see how I'm folding along those veins? And it doesn't have to be perfect. In nature, leaves are not perfect, right? Okay, so this is what you get then at that point. And what I did with this one is I really just sort of crunched it a little bit. Doing this, kind of just... in there. Straighten out all my little points. And voila, you have a cookie, a Dollar Tree cookie sheet tin maple leaf. And you can do whatever kind of leaf you want. So what do you guys think about that idea? Do you like that? If you do, um, give me some hearts. And oh my word, this is seriously driving me crazy. Okay, so I love that leaf combined with these burlap leaves on my toilet paper pumpkin. If you didn't see this tutorial, it's in my videos. And this could be added to uh, a dough bowl with um, uh, acorns and, and raffia balls and pumpkins and whatever you have in it. Or it could be put on a banner. It could be, I mean, you could do a ton of different things with this kind of leaf. And you saw how quick it was and how unperfect uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> okay, next up I want to show you some ideas using those raffia, or not raffia, burlap leaves. Okay, so these come from the Dollar Tree. 
you get five in a package. They have a burgundy color, this pretty orange that I love. I'm a real orange girl these days. And then this um, natural color. And um, so earlier this week when I was showing you the porch sitter seasonal add-ons, I showed you guys some of the fun things that you can do with stencils with the, to just really elevate what these look like. And I'll show you a couple, and then I wanna show you how super easy it is to do. I mean, seriously easy. Okay, this is one that I did with black chalk paste on an orange flower. And this is this fun stencil right here that looks like a leopard. It comes in a two pack. There's a leopard and doggy paws and this one. Okay, and then I showed you this one too. And this was just stripes and that was part of this three pack stencil set. All these are from magnoliadiy.com and I did drop a pin or pinned a link at the bottom of this page so you can just click on that and hop over and look if you want. And hopefully, I was having a few issues with my link yesterday, so maybe if somebody could check and make sure that's working, um, I would appreciate it. So it had the, these stripes, it had these, I don't know what you call that, zigzags, and it had this sort of 1920s kind of look in it. And I've used this one a ton. So I just laid that on top of this leaf and used black chalk paste and stenciled it, let it dry. It dried for a couple of hours and it was super easy. Um, okay, and then, but my favorite, because probably because this is one of my favorite stencils, is this one that I made. And this I did with... The ugliest stencil the whole world in the whole world, my Mandela lace stencil, also from Magnolia DIY. I just laid it on the top and I figured out where I wanted this center to be. And I used black chalk paste and it came out pretty darn good. Now let's talk for two seconds about what kind of medium you need to use. Um, for this project with these leaves, you could really use whatever you want, honestly. Um, you could use the ink that Magnolia has that's designed for fabric because burlap is a fabric. And then if you wanted, you could heat set it with a hot iron. But the thing is, you're probably not gonna need to wash these. And um, so if all you have is chalk paste, you can definitely use chalk paste. And um, it's, it's gonna be stable, it's not coming off. If you were gonna put it outside, like on a covered porch or something, you could give it a quick spray of one of those Krylon clear matte spray sealers just to, to double, just to double make sure that it wasn't gonna come off or anything, but um, yeah, I just absolutely love these. So you can use ink or chalk paste, or you could even use acrylic paint if you want, but the thing about acrylic paint, I get this question, I don't know, maybe 20 times every day. It's a good question, everyone wants to know. The, it, can you use acrylic or craft paint with your stencils? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, but you, it, it's much thinner, so you would not apply it with a squeegee. You'd more likely apply it with a foam brush of some sort, either one of those round pouncer brushes or just a regular foam brush. And the other thing is, if you're going to use acrylic paint, you need to move super fast because acrylic paint and craft paint and chalk paint, for that matter, they all dry quickly. And you don't want that paint to dry in the holes on your stencil or else the next time you use it, whatever you're using it with won't go, be able to go through those holes and leave that impression. So, okay, so let's make one. Um, and I'm just gonna, this is the easiest thing that I've found to do. 
is just to get some paper towels. I'll bring my camera down. Hang on. So since these um, these leaves, what color do we want to do? Let's do a brown one. Since these leaves are five for a dollar, they're 20 cents a piece. If you mess one up trying to figure out how to do this, don't sweat it. Just throw it away. <laughs> you have four others. And um, you can buy this kind of thing, these burlap leaves, at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's, uh, you know, other craft places, but they're not going to be quite as affordable as if you get them at the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'm going to take the stem and just straighten it out, and I want this to be pretty darn flat. And then I think, just for fun, because I love the stencil so much, let's do some polka dots on it, okay? And um, let's do, I just got some new chalk paste in. Let me show you some of the colors real quick. These are also from Magnolia DIY. We're gonna do this one. It's the orange for fall and it's called Tiger Orange. And it is a great color. I've already used it on something that I'll show you in just a minute. So this will look cute on it. This is the new brown, it's called Chocolate Brown. I could do that as well. This chalk paste is so awesome to work with. Ooh, this is a beautiful color, and this is called maroon. And then um, I, we are gonna use this in one of the things that we're gonna do next. This is called olive. It's a new green, and it's an awesome green color. So you'll see that when I pull it out for the next project that we're about to do. Um, they also have this color named Mustard, which is very interesting, you guys. Um, I never say anything that's not completely positive about any of the companies that I represent, but I mean, this is a mustard color. What does this color remind you of? It, it might look great on things. I haven't tried it yet. To me, it reminds me of, you know, baby. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I would describe it more as a caramel color than a mustard color, but I'm excited to have this new color to work with. So, Mustard Seed is the name of it. And all these chalk pastes are, um, if you wanna look at those or any of the other colors that they have, you can just use the link that I put at the bottom of the page and um, it'll take you to my website. And then just click on chalk paste or stencils or whatever you want to look at and look around. There's also a beautiful catalog there, an online catalog full of great ideas if you're interested. Okay, so we're going to use this polka dot stencil from Magnolia. And um, I've used this so much. I mean, I've probably used this over 20 times. Um, so I'm not going to fuzz it because there's no need to fuzz it at this point. It's not gonna be super duper sticky. Okay, and I'm just gonna lay my stencil over the top of my paper towel and my leaf. We're making a sandwich. All right, and we're gonna use this orange called Tiger, Tiger Orange. And I'm just gonna use a squeegee and dang it. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to take a good amount of it because it's going to go through the um, burlap onto uh, onto the um, paper towel. When you're stenciling on burlap, it's it's going to be pretty chalk or paint or whatever you're using intensive um, because it's so the fibers are so porous that you end up using more than what you would use on any other kind of project. Can you see how easy this is? And I'm just lifting up the corners here and there, I'll show you what I'm doing, to, uh, I need some more wipes, to um, see if I've covered everything.
Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now. This is our leaf sandwich, and I'm just gonna pull that up, and that looks awesome. Can you guys see that? So I'm gonna throw this in the little tub of water that I have over here off camera while I'm still crafting, and then when I'm done, I will go to my kitchen sink, and I will um, just spray it out. And Magnolia has this great stencil cleaner that I want to tell you about. It's white, and it is great for helping your stencils not get all stained looking and just cleaning them up. So if you haven't, and it's not expensive at all, if you haven't seen that before or you don't have that, that is something worth considering. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. Super cute. Isn't that cute? And this is what I meant about it going through. So, that's why we had two layers. Um, I'm just gonna set this off to the side to dry. And um, so you can see how easy this is. You could use any one of these stencils. There's a little buffalo check. This wood is kind of cool. That might be really cool. The doggy prints, stripes, zigzags, the mandela lace. We're gonna use that in just a second. I love that stencil. Anything that has sort of an all over repeating pattern is really nice to go on these burlap leaves. Okay, let me set these aside. And I'm thinking these could go on a, um, well, again, they could go on anything, a wreath, a sign in a bowl with a bowl filler fall stuff. Um, yeah, if you guys have ideas of what you would put this on, I would love to, to hear that. So put that in the comments. Oh, oh my gosh, you're so sweet. The things you guys say to me just tickles me. Diana, is it Diana or Diana? Let me see. Diana Howard says, I just love watching you. You are so sweet and descriptive. I should have been a teacher. I really missed my calling. So now I found it, teaching crafts. And, um, and I love it. Okay, so those are the stenciled leaves. Now, um, if your Dollar Tree has these, you should just grab them. Grab a bunch of them, because you'll use them this year and next, and they're super affordable, and um, get a couple of colors. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is this idea of stenciling on these little wooden color your own ornaments is what they're called, also from the Dollar Tree. Or on this, which is the big version of it, which we're gonna do, okay? Um, and then I'm going to show you a pumpkin that I did that's super cute. I love how it turned out. And, um, yeah. So I'm just, let me put my phone down so you guys can see. Let's see. I don't want to tip my tripod over. Okay, I think you guys can see. Um, so I'm going to cut this little string off. I have plenty of jute and cording and hemp and all that. Uh, it's just going to be in the way if I leave it on there right now. Okay. And before I came live with, um, with wood, let me tell you this, this is important. Okay. When you're working on wood and I know that I say this like every video and still people ask when you're working on wood, you just need to know that it has pores like like skin and like fabric it has little holes in it and um when you stencil or paint on it it's gonna sometimes tend to bleed out a little bit because it will get sucked whatever you're stenciling especially uh, chalk paint acrylic paint and craft paint because it's thinner so it'll tend to it can tend to look a little bleedy or 
or fuzzy on the edges. And that is not a problem with you or your stenciling or the stencils or really even what you're using. It's just an issue that you're gonna have with wood, okay? So there's two things you can do. And I go back and forth. Um, today I used wax. I just put a thin coat of wax on this side and buffed it. That closes or shrinks down those pores, closes them so that they can't grab that medium and just spread it everywhere. The other thing you can do is the spray sealer. Let me grab that so I can show that to you right now. And I'll also show you the wax that I'm using. Um, all right, I'm always telling you guys to use what you have whenever possible. So I just have this little tube here of clear wax from another company. Um, they don't sell this anymore. And, um, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. Now when it's gone, I will go purchase one of those little round tins of min wax, a clear min wax. But for now, I'm gonna use what I have whenever possible. So this is what I use today. And I just put it on a, a rag, like this is an old t-shirt that I cut up and I put it on there and then I buffed it. And what I do is I will wash these every couple of times with some cruddy towels and stuff and then keep reusing them. So that's one thing you could do. The other thing you can do to prevent this bleed with your wood is use one of these matte finish clear spray sealers. Okay, and this one says, this is a Krylon brand. It doesn't have to be that brand, it can be whatever. It says permanent protective matte finish eliminates not and eliminates glossy sheen, non-yellowing, moisture resistant coating and dries in minutes. This is easier, honestly, to do than the, the spray. But I like to mix it up. So today I used the, or it's easier than the wax, excuse me. Um, so today I used the wax instead of the spray. But either one of those work. The spray's about four or five dollars. Mine came from uh, Walmart, so it's not, you know, like a fancy brand or anything. Okay, so, let's set this guy's apart. Um, so I wanna use this olive color. Love it. So excited about that color. And I wanna use my I don't know, pretty close to my all-time favorite stencil. And the evidence of that is that it looks cruddy as all heck. But it still works great, okay? So I'm gonna um, use that to stencil this leaf. And then it could be put on a banner, it could be put in a wreath, it could be a sign. Um, you could just put it on your doorway. I mean, there's so many things you could do. And this stencil also has been used so many times that there's no need to uh, fuzz it on a fuzzing towel or anything. Um, I wanted to see, can you guys see how there's holes in, the, in this stencil? Well, a lot of times the front of them will get stained and that's okay, that happens when you're using ink. Um, but as long as the holes are not all clogged up, then the stencil is still gonna work just fine. And um, that is the issue that happens sometimes when you use either chalk paint, craft paint, or acrylic paint. It just dries so fast that it dries in those holes and then it's hard to get it out. So your stencil will function right. Okay, so let me put my camera back down. All right, and I'm just, I like to do this eye of the Mandela Lace off to the side. That way it doesn't look like, oh, she didn't get it perfectly straight, you know? So let me see, where is it? Yeah, well, I think that's perfect, okay? And I'm just gonna press it down and try to remember where that shape is because through all the stain, it's hard to see. And um, if you wanted to do specific areas of it, different colors, I totally recommend these new paint brush squeegees, also from Magnolia DIY, and there's a link down here. 
um, they're great for getting details. But we're do we're gonna do an all over color, and this is a big stencil and. Uh, chalk paste dries as well so we're gonna move pretty quickly to get this covered and I'm gonna show you a trick if you find that you're moving a little bit slower than you want to I'm gonna show you a trick for how to deal with that okay I'm just looking to see where my piece is so I'm gonna start on this side and just use a big glob of this olive Put my glasses on so I can see okay and I'm just gonna quickly start Moving it around, I can feel where the leaf is underneath this stencil. I can't really see the edges of it, but that's okay. You guys can see what I mean. I'm seriously going quickly. And when I've done this before, I have stenciled a little bit on my desk, which the chalk paste comes right off with a, a wipe. But don't be surprised if you go off the edge and outside of the paper towel even. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some of this excess here and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. This is gonna be so pretty. Okay, when you are doing a big stencil, you can lift up the side that you've already done and take a peek, you see that? And then lay it back down and that prevents the ink for, or the, the chalk or whatever you're using from actually drying in those holes. And then, because if it dries in those holes, when you lift it up, it's gonna all pull, it's gonna pull the design right off of your piece. Okay. I think I was almost done with this when I did that. I have some small ones of these wood leaves to show you also. Okay, let's look and see. See a spot already that I didn't get. Pull the whole thing off. I'm gonna use the end of one of these guys to hold it down. And I'm gonna go throw this in my tub of water. Ooh, it's gonna be a real mess when it comes time to clean that up. So those green and orange together are not so great. It's like a big murky mess. I'm get my hands cleaned off a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up and show it to you. And then I'm gonna show you this other project that I'm in process with. And um, what do you guys think? Is that cool or what? I love it. Absolutely love it. If I was gonna do this as a project, I would use the same stencil and do a whole bunch of little pieces also. And you could hang them whichever direction you like like this one has a hole in the top. The little ones have the hole in the top too, so you could hang them on some cording and make a banner out of it. That would be really cute. What do you guys think about that? Pretty nice, huh? If you like this Mandela lace stencil, give me some hearts. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna set this here for a minute and clean up my hands. They're starting to really look a mess. And so is my <laughs> craft room, it's a disaster. Anyways, if you are just hopping on, we have been doing fun things to fall leaves today. And you should uh, go, when this is over, go back to the videos and watch this on replay from the start. Cause I did a tin leaf at the start and then we did burlap leaves second. And you probably will want to see those. Those projects were cool. Okay. Um, so, next up, let me show you. Okay, so before I came live, I did this. 
This is the exact same thing as what the, um, the wood leaf shape is. It's also from Dollar Tree, but it's a pumpkin. All right. And then I just took some of the strings. Do you guys know about the pulled burlap strings and how you can do so many cool things with those? I have several videos on making rolled rosettes and um, the burlap flowers, the pulled string burlap flowers. And anyways, uh, I'll see if I can find one and put a link to that video in the comments here because that is a fun craft. So anyways, so I just used some of that to put on here. This is black chalk paste, by the way. All right. And then here's some more of the strings. I always save them because I save everything. You never know when you're going to want it. I pulled this out of, where is my, I got the ribbon out because I knew I, I knew someone would ask me and I wanted to be able to show it to you. Okay, this came from Walmart. They had orange. I don't have any more of it left, but it's this idea. And you cut the end of it and then you pull the strings out of almost the whole center of it. And then you glue it around and it makes these flowers that look like this, just the sloopy outside part, okay? And then I used a, a smaller ribbon to make a smaller little flower inside of it. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so my thought was just to, let me put this down. Do you guys like this project? I love this one. I love, I'm a black and white girl and orange. <laughs> I love orange and I love blues and I love creams and browns. I guess I love every color, but right now I'm really loving this orange. So I'm just gonna tie these strings in a knot here, kind of off to the side. All right. And then I was thinking that I would um, hot glue this, move this up. I was thinking that I would hot glue this flower. How can I hold on to it so I, my fingers are not right in your way? Off to the side, and you get it. Um, that would be really pretty, and I, I wanted to point out that on this one, I decided to leave some negative space. And if you don't know what negative space is, it's, um, it's a design, you know, craft art term where you leave some part of your project undecorated, and it just gives some, some visual interest. It also is supposed to rest your eye, but this is a very busy pattern. So I, um, I left some negative space right here that I didn't cover, and I put my the eye of the Mandela clear over to the side. Um, okay, so another thing you could do is I used just some basic craft paint from Walmart, or I don't know where this came from. It might have come from the Dollar Tree. And I painted some of these wood leaves. Um, this color's a little bright, so probably what I would do is just take a stain or even um, a dark brown paint or a black paint on a baby wipe and just kind of wipe it over it to mute it a little bit. And then this would be cute. I mean, we're supposed to be talking about fall leaves. That would be cute on here. Or um, if I was doing this project, and it was, let's look at the other side and imagine. And it was more of a solid color, uh, not so busy with a, that Mandela lace stencil on it. You, could, you can do some fun things with these little ones. So using that leopard stencil that is so cute. This one I left natural and I just waxed it before I stenciled it. And this one I painted black and I stenciled it at the same time. I laid both pieces down and laid the stencil, the leopard stencil over both. And I used this tiger orange chalk paste. So look how cute those are. And um, you could do 
something like this with multiple pieces of it. What do you guys think? So anyways, um, really all I wanted to share with you guys today is the idea, let me find some of my samples, is the idea that you, leaves are usually not the center of your autumn displays, but they can be for sure. Leaves are special, especially if you make them special. So think about making some Dollar Tree cookie sheet tin leaves and adding them to something real neutral like I have with this pumpkin, this toilet paper pumpkin. And in case you're wondering, these are the strings out of some of that uh, natural colored burlap ribbon too. And this is a champagne cork. And these are the Dollar Tree leaves. And this was a napkin from Hobby Lobby. And inside of it is some of that quilter's batting and a roll of toilet paper. Okay, so that's one idea to make your leaves really a focal point. Another idea is to stencil. Oh, right there, right in front of me. To stencil your fall leaves and add them to something that's plainer. And um, these are so easy and so affordable. And uh, like I told you at this point in the video, you can use whatever medium you want, whether that's chalk paste, ink, craft paint, uh, chalk paint. Just if you're using any of those paints, just move quickly. Okay. And then the last thing I showed you was this idea of dressing up these little wooden pieces. You can get these at Dollar Tree, but you can get them everywhere this time of year. And here's the, here's the one that I just showed you how to do. And this has olive green chalk paste on it. It's that same Mandela lace stencil that I love so much. And there's tons that you could do with that. And then I also showed you this pumpkin and the idea of, you know, doing something fun here. So I hope that you guys got some good ideas. When I do these videos, um, a lot of times my projects aren't completely finished, but really all I want to do is give you guys the ideas that you can then take and make them your own, in your own style, to go in your decor, or if it's a gift, to go in the recipient's style and decor. So um, I hope that you'll take these ideas of really jazzing up your fall leaves and making them the, the focus of your fall decorating. Um, doing the tin, the stenciled burlap, and the stenciled wood. And if you're interested in looking at any of these new chalk paste colors, love this olive green, love this tiger orange, it's amazing. Or you wanna look at any of the stencils that I used, I did pin a link at the bottom of the page and I hope it's working. Um, I'm gonna go back and add throughout the conversations here a few longer links to my website because if you shop at Magnolia I'd love it if you'd shop through my website I make a little commission on every sale that comes into them through my link and that is how I do my crafting uh, a little decorating here at the house how I take care of my jewelry how I go to the loft to get some cute clothes occasionally and um, so I'd love it if you would use my link if you decide that you want to do a little shopping. Do I have something on my face? I feel like I do. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you do these projects, I'd love to see pictures of what you make over at Dreamy DIY. That's the Facebook group that I set up for you guys to be able to get even more ideas and to share pictures of the things that you're creating. All right, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys. I will put take pictures, put this in the comments and then on this page. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Christ and crafting. And I had already, I had been thinking about what I was gonna do. So I'll just give you a little preview. We're gonna talk about this verse. Well, it's part of one of the Psalms. It's a little teeny snippet of a much longer 
set of verses that will talk about all of that and we'll talk about this piece too. It's from Psalm 23 and this little piece here is verse 5. So if you want to read ahead, get your Bible out, read all of Psalm 23. And um, we'll be doing some projects using this tomorrow during Christ and Crafting and we'll be talking about exactly what does it mean when people say my cup runneth over and um, oh, this, it, this is a really beautiful imagery of, of what, how, how Christ pours into us. So I can't wait to share it with you. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you later.